Have you ever been hesitant to save your car details online or annoyed at having to enter your details every time you check out? Well, you're not alone. Hey everyone, I am Vipin Soni, Senior Manager at Razorpay and I'm handling payments engineering. Today, I have Sam and Sarabjit who are part of Razorpay engineering team that took to the challenge to solve this problem and will learn how they came up with the car tokenization solution and the problems they encountered building it up. Hey Sam, hey Sarab. Hey, Vipin. Thanks for having us. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Vipin. So, the main reason that we started working on this product was because of the RBI guidelines that mandated that uh, going forward, uh, payment aggregators and uh, uh, merchants like Swiggy Zomato, they cannot save card data on their end in any form. So, they instead had to interact with tokens which are substitute of card numbers. So, like, uh, recently, we have seen a lot of uh, data breaches across the industry where the data, uh, card data was leaked online or the companies had to pay ransom to stop the exposure of the same. So, like, online payments definitely had to be made safer and more secure, which is why RBI came up with these set of guidelines. And on our side, we wanted to provide a solution that allowed merchants to process the tokenized card payments and save cards on checkout while still being compliant with these guidelines. So if I understood correctly, just to sum up, RBI mandated that cards couldn't be saved with merchants or payment aggregators, paving the way for more secure payment method, right? Yeah, exactly. So our product is essentially a solution for banks to process tokenized card payments for their merchants. Uh, it's a safer and a more reliable way of processing payments that eliminates the need for customers to enter their card details again and again. Got it. So, uh, it provides a more uh, consistent customer journey. And what else? Uh, so, another important aspect is that it brings more visibility and control to the end card holders. Uh, with our product, they can easily see and manage their tokenized cards on the customer portal and take actions like pausing, resuming, deleting the cards whenever they want. All right. So customers can have a view of where their cards are being saved across all the platforms in the country. Uh, it, actually, that's great, right? Can you, can you explain a bit uh, about tokenization and who is allowed to do it? Sure, Vipin. Uh, so tokenization basically means uh, substituting the actual card number with some sort of uh, replacement value okay uh, basically RBI mandated that uh, only networks uh, basically like Visa MasterCard or uh, the issuing banks uh, like HDFC or any other banks that actually issue your credit cards or debit cards can store your card numbers so in a just merchants were not allowed to do so Hence, uh, we came up, uh, like RBI itself came up with a tokenization solution where merchants would be allowed to store a substitute value instead of the actual card value. And they will be sending it forward to payment gateways and all the banks uh, for the actual payment processing. Okay, so just curious and of course, uh, I'm sure viewers uh, would like to know, uh, could you explain what a token, token engine and the portal is? Okay. So a uh, token, as I uh, mentioned earlier, is basically a substitute value uh, for the actual card number. Uh, it could constitute uh, like a mixture of values of your card number, expiry, name, merchant name, any uh, XYZ values, okay? Uh, so uh, any hash or any particular substitute value that, that would work or uniquely help us identify which card you're actually using for transacting. Now token engine is uh, our proprietary engine which enables us to uh, and do this tokenization and also uh, the detokenization of your uh, tokens uh, into actual card numbers that could be further used for payments by the banks itself. Now uh, the portal is a proprietary card holder portal that we are providing where users can log in and look at uh, their tokens stored, their actual cards stored at all the merchants across India. So let's say you've stored uh, your card at Flipkart and uh, you also stored the same card or you have multiple cards uh, belonging to same number uh, uh, and it might be stored at Swiggy, Zomato, right? XYZ places. Now, uh, when you log in into our customer portal, you'll be able to uh, see all your cards listed down there uh, and uh, you can see all the places where your card is being actually stored. So this gives you a, a strong hold to manage your uh, card uh, data 
also uh, you can control uh, if uh, you want to continue using that card at that particular place okay all right uh, that that really sounds interesting but i also want to understand what about uh, the end users like how does this product benefit them yeah so like the biggest benefit that they'll be getting is the security of the data of this uh, of course so which is very rare to see these days and we have tried to keep the customer experience consistent and the only change that they will notice is a one time prompt asking for consent to save their card details according to the rbi guidelines and in addition to this they get a portal where they can manage their saved cards so it's like a simple and a seamless process that uh, saves them time and hassle and uh, provides them with a one stop solution to manage their cards that sounds great so now that we know the product is can you tell us how you started with it can you tell us more about the process and the challenges you faced i'm sure you must have faced lot of challenges uh, you know in this journey yeah that was that's true so like we started with a blank slate and our uh, team went to various banks to gauge their interest in our uh, product so it was a completely new concept for us and we had no exposure to banking uh, so it was like a huge learning curve for us so one time our team even interacted uh, with a security guard at the bank for an hour because we thought he was the uh, bank manager itself so like we had to travel to multiple cities uh, and visit multiple banks and deal with a, a multitude of people just to check the market fit for the product okay interesting what what were some of the challenges you faced when dealing with these banks and their various teams so like one of the biggest challenges that uh, we faced was like uh, the different compliance teams within the banks uh didn't have internal communication at all so uh, this meant like whenever when uh, we were having a meeting with a new team we had to start from square one and explain the entire product from scratch so it was a slow and frustrating process at times i am sure it was tough uh so uh, can you tell us more about how you overcame these challenges and eventually got the product off the ground yeah so we started uh by meeting with a few banks face to face listening to their feedback and uh, like presenting them with figma and uh, ppt slides regarding how the product would look like so every bank had their own requirements so some wanted uh, uh, on prem deployment some wanted it to be on the cloud some wanted a specific sub part of the product so it was like challenging but we managed to get the clarity on the direction that we needed to take sounds like uh, you had to be very adaptable and uh, you know flexible to make sure that the product met the needs of each of these banks so sir uh, can you tell us a bit uh, more about how you built this initial mvp for your tokenized card payment product definitely with me uh so when we started out uh, we had nothing uh, to begin with uh, ra- apart from the rbi guideline itself uh, so just a sheet of paper now uh, we had uh, we we wanted to br- build a product that the bank might be willing to take up and offer some uh, functionalities that might be beneficial for them uh, but uh, we didn't knew what they were uh, so basically we just started with that uh, guideline and we built a token engine itself and then we started uh, pitching it uh, as sam said earlier to different banks and uh, started understanding what more they wanted uh, out of the product uh now as we move forward uh, they started uh, asking for a admin portal where they could have control over all the cards uh, that are coming in they can view uh, the uh, cards and their tokens and various other functionalities so our initial mvp only consisted of uh, this tokenization engine and uh, the admin portal itself all right so basically it actually was a great sign that uh, uh, that validated that uh, you uh, were on the right track right yeah. and awesome uh, now since you guys were new to the world of banking how did you choose your stack to build the product so initially we were building it out in golang but uh, we realized that some banks wanted on prem support uh, as i mentioned earlier for the application and uh, so they had web uh, web servers like web logic and web sphere which would support only java builds so like we shifted our focus to java as we realized more and more banks might have this requirement so uh, also as we started to get 
interest from the banks we realized that they were looking for more than just a token engine so they wanted like a end to end uh, payment solution that included authentication authorization with bank systems uh, itself and uh, i think one of the biggest challenges that we uh, faced initially while building uh, this product was like uh, we built a monolith earlier and kept adding bank requested features into it so uh, when we shifted the stack we also thought about the system uh, and the future of the product uh, which finally led, uh, led us to uh, break down the monolith into microservices and uh, yeah so with that rearchitecting we were uh, able to support on prem deployments for banks with java web service and cloud deployments as well so it was definitely a challenge but uh, we uh, knew it was important to uh, meet the banks demands so like uh, we had to update our roadmap adjust our deadlines bring in additional devs to uh, do all of that so but we were able to provide a more comprehensive service that uh, fulfills the expectations of our customers okay so you emphasized a lot on uh, security of sensitive uh, data earlier so i i'm curious like how did you uh, ensure that there would be no data leaks okay uh, so yeah you can never be too secure uh, with the data right uh, and we have seen in the recent times in the industry that uh, there have been uh, data leaks where card data or uh, the personal data of users have been handed out and we've all seen first hand what kind of scam calls we get right so uh, we use the industry standard as256 encryption to keep uh, the data secured and encrypted at rest also uh, we built out a separate module itself to rotate the keys periodically and re encrypt the data uh, so that even uh, in worst case scenario if something goes wrong uh, it would be uh, re encrypted again and the attacker will have a very hard time going through our data Uh, okay. we also conducted uh, various uh, vulnerability and uh, uh, stress tests across our platform to maintain the highest uh, security standards for our application hmm. understood okay so uh, what are the tech investments needed for maintaining such security protocols which you just uh, mentioned okay so yeah again like i mentioned uh, we are using like high level of encryption so uh, the keys uh, have to be rotated periodically uh, just to prevent uh, any leaks in that case we also have to undertake uh, multiple certifications from uh, organizations like pci mm -hmm. okay so uh, one of those things which you try to mention around security is definitely a usp for this product right but then is there anything else which you want to talk about what makes your product unique for these banks uh sure so when we decided uh, when we started out the product we started with a bank but uh, soon we started uh, getting interest from other banks as well and uh, we uh, realized this early on that our product has to be extensible so we made it uh, in a way like we can uh, offer a plug and play system where banks can choose particular parts of uh, our product or the entire soup even if they are choosing uh, the particular part they have the option to customize the product with various things like uh, earlier on uh, i said that we are using uh, kms for encryption right uh, but we also have extensibility for uh, hashicorp vault uh, for the same encryption uh similarly uh we also have a module called mandate hq where you can see all your mandates so uh that's a integral uh, razor pay product but we also support uh, outside products like as i have so uh, again it totally depends on the bank's preference and uh, we are totally aligned with that and uh, ready to modify our product easily uh, with those needs yeah okay uh while we we talked about you know certain security aspects and the functional requirements of how you came up uh, to you know build this product i would also like to understand like how did you uh, handle the non functional aspect of the system where you know performance of the system and uh, the way we want to scale up for the more payment traffic uh, is considered uh okay so uh, our uh, product was designed with scalability in mind as well uh, we did multiple uh, levels of performance testing uh, tuned our application according to it and uh, also uh, we keep on doing vulnerability tests uh, and uh, keep on fixing those so that uh, nothing uh, can uh, affect the performance no attacker can uh, come up and have a ddos attack or something like that okay yeah. 
Okay, great. Uh, so uh, we have covered a lot about your journey of uh, you know building this uh, tokenized card payment product. Could you provide some of the important lessons and learnings from this experience? As I'm sure that there there uh, have been lots. Uh, but then we still want to understand like what are those uh, key uh, uh, you know experiences that you want to uh, share with the audience. Yeah, so like uh, I think there were a lot of learnings. So, uh, for example, like we started out with a Kanban style uh, development method, which like enabled us to move swiftly and adapt to changing requirements. But um, like as the uh, product became more complex, we discovered that like a more systematic approach was required, and so we transitioned to a Scrum model, uh, which aided us in like planning and eliminating ad hoc plans. So, um, and I like believe that one of our most significant achievements have been uh, has been the development of the product that is suited to the demands of various banks, like with uh, multiple flavors for plug and play integration. And we uh, definitely made certain that uh, we met the demands of the uh, infosec and the appsec criteria of the banks and uh, the PCI SSF standards as well. So. Performance and scalability were always uh, top of mind, uh, especially as we saw more and more interest from the bank. So we did a lot of testing and tuning to ensure that our product could handle the anticipated load. Uh, and we implemented a robust uh, testing strategy as well uh, that, uh, that helped us detect any problems before they reached production. So uh, as of now, like uh, every pull request uh, that we have goes through rigorous checks and code reviews to maintain like the or at most product quality. All right, Sam, uh, you touched uh, upon uh, aspect of testing, right? So, any challenges you uh, faced while uh, you know testing this product? So, since it was a plug and play solution that had several fa flavors with different banks, we had to test each module uh, and also add regression tests separately for each bank. Uh, according to the flow of that particular bank. So there were like uh, several secrets and environment values for each bank and we had to maintain it to be picked from a centralized place. And we separated it by namespace for each bank. Uh, so overall, what I feel, despite some early challenges, the team uh, came together and eventually recognized a, a legit market demand for a better tokenization solution. Awesome. Thank you, Sam and Sarab, uh, for summarizing your uh, zero to one journey of building this uh, revolutionary product. Uh, thanks, Pippin. Thanks for having us. Thanks. And to viewers, uh, I, we hope uh, you had as much fun in learning about this journey as I did and as I'm sure uh, Sarab and uh, uh, Sam did. If you did, check out our other videos and stay tuned for more of such stories. Bye. Thanks.